Hello, Dark Souls fans, and welcome to what is kind of the first episode of my Let's Play series. Basically, I found Dark Souls 2 had quite a few mechanical regressions from Dark Souls 1. And I want to make sure that Dark Souls 3 doesn't. Now, I've taken the liberty of constructing a character that is going to be able to test all this stuff. But I basically haven't really done much. I've just set up graphic settings, and that's about it. So... Let's go and test out what's going to happen here. So, with... All right. So, first off, this is just the test character. Bear in mind, I'm actually not going to be testing or playing through with this character. This is just for testing purposes. But I chose the character because... I don't need this. chose the character because I need to test some range stuff. Here, let's go over the test list. So, this is the basic list of things to test. Whether or not there's rolling input lag, whether or not attacks that you're rolling, if you're locked into target, that the rolling attack will actually hit the target rather than carry with your momentum. Making sure that kick and jump attacks, if they can work from any facing, like if I am facing forward and I hit like left plus left plus weak attack or left plus strong attack, it should hopefully just do a kick or a jumping attack to the left. And whether or not range attacks can be aimed vertically without being aimed, without being locked in. I'll get to that last one in more detail when I get to it. But basically, first off, we're going to start out testing input lag, and for that purpose, I actually have a little button for when I hit the button. Now, one thing I am going to have to do is turn on the, or turn the HUD. I forgot about this, I'm sorry. Let's see, where's the HUD? It needs to be on at all times so that we can see the stamina bar, because the easiest way to test, I think, is stamina bar. Now, this is going to be something I'm going to have to test later, but basically what's going to come down to is, I mean, it feels like there is no input lag. So I'm going to check against that, that light against, but it looks like it's about, yeah, it looks like it's about on track. So it looks like rolling input lag is no longer a thing. Dark Souls 2 had it really bad. It was like 15 frames. Dark Souls 1 had no problem. Dark Souls 2 had it. And so the next steps, it's good. Rolling of a lag. All right. The next one, rolling attacks on a locked-on target. So, like I said, normally what would happen is that if I did a rolling attack without with locking on, it would be like that. Just carry my momentum, and then it wouldn't matter that I was locked on. So, let's see. Okay, it looks like you actually... It doesn't matter if you're locked on. Although, my roll is so long that it's hard to actually make that matter. But, yep. Okay, so locking on for rolling attacks does seem to work. Bit of a basic one, but important. It actually makes the main combat a lot easier, a lot more interesting when you can just when you don't have to be rolling towards the opponent to hit them with a rolling attack that's buffered. In Dark Souls 2, if you did a roll and then you did an attack that was buffered during the roll, you would carry forward your momentum. It'd be like you were not locked on at all. If you waited about a second, you'd do a rolling attack aimed at the opponent, but there's no flow in that. It was not very enjoyable. So the next one is kicks and jumping attacks. So normally if I'm facing forward and I... Hmm. Oh, the sword's a special one. Interesting. It doesn't have a kick. It's more of a... I don't even sure what that is. So yeah, that's our kick. So let's just actually test with the kick. And that's our jumping attack. So right now, facing forward, left and... Left... Okay. Make sure I got the timing right. Let's see, forward, forward jump. Okay. Kick. Kick. That was actually pretty hard. Okay, now let's try back. Hmm. So it looks like it doesn't actually do. No. If I hit, if I go back, like say forward, forward right now, then it works, or back, back, it works. Well, I got the timing right. But yeah, it looks like this is something you have to basically hit the direction twice in order for it to work. Just double check pad. I'm using keyboard and mouse, by the way. Let's double check on gamepad just to see if it's the same thing. 
Ah. Ah. Darn it. Okay. That was not what I wanted to have happen. Silly crossbow. Getting in my way. All right, let's try that again. So, where was I? Oh, yeah, right. Testing this. Yeah, it looks like with the same timing. Oops. Actually, this is really hard. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's actually hard to test right now. It's easier to test on keyboard and mouse because I can get the timing down more easily. Ah, this is a much harder thing to test. Oops. Nope. So it looks like independent of whether you use a keyboard and mouse or use a gamepad, you have to be facing the direction you want to kick or strong attack in order to kick or strong attack. This is something Dark Souls 2 did that Dark Souls 1 did not, so that kind of sucks. But yeah, you cannot kick or jump attack from any facing. To any facing, you have to be facing the direction you're doing a kick or jump attack to. Not a big deal. Honestly, only the input lag one is a deal breaker. Because this is basically testing to make sure that the game is going to be fun to play through. That's the big deal. That's the real question. And looks like it actually will be. The input lag thing is the big one. And the last one is ranged attacks. Assuming this is actually a ranged... You've got to be kidding me. Okay, so... Bear with me. I'm going to go get a different character. Hang on a sec. Don't worry, I'm not going to spend very much time doing it, but yeah. Not what I wanted. So let's check this then. New game. I'm not going to show the intro. I will show the intro in the actual episode one. This is effectively episode zero. And I want to have the... Well, Thief's not a bad one. Try Sorcerer. I have... I have a feeling that magic is going to be more restrictive. If it's going to work with magic, it'll work with other ranged weapons. Now, in case you're wondering, I am going to be using a crossbow during the run once I find one in the game. But not at first. Anyway, let's... Where's... Oh, I don't know why you're not there. So let's see. Okay, it looks like I can freely aim vertically. Now, it may seem a little weird, but basically the way that free aiming works... So anyone who played Dark Souls 1 probably remembers the binoculars. Now, the binoculars, what they actually did was essentially place your character in a position where this mattered. The way that aiming in Dark Souls works is that the lateral direction is determined by your character's facing. So my character is facing essentially out towards the lake area. They're going to fire towards the lake area. The vertical facing is determined by the camera, however. It's essentially the center of the screen if you're looking through the character. So you're kind of looking through the character in order to do it. You can, as you can see here, just go a bit to the side, because if you change the camera facing, it doesn't actually change the horizontal aiming. The lateral component, it only changes the vertical component. In Dark Souls 2, this didn't actually work, and this also applies to melee weapons as well. Or yeah, there, It does apply to melee weapons as well. So yeah, it's a bit harder to tell because they can't just show it on part of the map, but basically, yeah. You can aim pretty much freely up or down in one, and apparently in three. You could not do that in two. In two, your aiming was effectively locked to being leveled to the ground. So if I fired a shot, fired a soul arrow, it would always be leveled to the ground, even if I was facing up. Or Same with an arrow or regular arrow, anything like that. Didn't matter. Whatever I did, that's what, how it would work. But in two, in two, it would be level, unless I was on a staircase, in which case it might go up up the staircase, and I think there were 45 degree lock points, where if I was up, it might go up 45 degrees, 
but I'm pretty sure that only happened on stairs. So normally it was level to the ground, same with arrows and crossbow bolts, unless you were in aim mode. Now for magic, that was impossible. For non-magic, like for magic, you can't go into an aim mode while two-handing. You can with bows and crossbows. Well, in crossbows and two, I'll, I have, I cannot check that right now, but free aiming exists, so if it doesn't work, then I have free aiming, so it's not a big deal. If crossbows don't have the, the down-the-sides aiming that they do in two, which I kind of hope they do, because that was nice, but I am glad that free aim exists, because that's much easier when you have an offhand crossbow as part of your build. So, that works too. So yeah, three out of four, not bad. I do kind of wish that the kicks and rolling, or kicks and jump attacks would work from any facing, but frankly, that's not a big deal when I can just sort of double tap if I want to face it. Oops. Oops. Yeah. I mean... One of the big problems with Dark Souls 2 that was a bit more fundamental than just, oh, you can't do a jump attack or a kick or whatever from, well, guard break, whatever, from any direction, is that turn radius or turn speed was actually a thing. And 1 and 3, you turned more or less, if not infinitely fast, you turned fast enough that it wouldn't screw you up doing these, effect, doing these attacks. Or if I go back and attack and then forward and attack... Like, it'll, it changes 180 degrees effectively instantly. Not actually instantly, but fast enough that it makes no difference. Two did not do that. Two, it seemed like it would only move about 135 degrees when you tried to do that. It was the same problem with rolling and that I tested earlier. So yeah, it looks like Dark Souls 3 is totally viable for this kind of let's play. For me, I will actually have fun doing this. Awesome! Core mechanics are good. So yeah, at this point, I'm probably going to just turn this off. I don't intend to do the series live. I intend to do the series offline. I'm partly tempted to do the first episode live right now, but honestly, I think it'd just be easier to do it all offline, just to have that same le the proper level of quality and editing and everything from episode one on. So thank you for watching, and I'll have the first episode of this up probably soon after this is up on YouTube. So, thanks for watching.